Howdy, howdy, folks. It is Diecast Buffet here again, and today we have a Kyle Larson Vegas race win Chevrolet Camaro. Holy cow, this is so cool, man. Kyle Larson got his first win for Hendrick Motorsports at the Penzo 400, and guys, we got the raced version in the 164 scale. I am so excited about this. So, without further ado, Let's go ahead and check it out. Alrighty, folks. Right out of the good old box and check out this piece. The first uh, win of what is a 10 or 11 win season in 2021. Oh my goodness, man. The Larson collector is going to go crazy for these things. This is so cool. You know, I remember watching this race, guys. And um, I was hoping so much after that race was over that they were going to make the 164. And sure enough, they did. Let me tell you, this is awesome. So it's the standard Kyle Larson, Hen uh, Kyle Larson Hendrick paint scheme, but it has a very faint amount of yellow pencil colored confetti. And I think it looks fantastic, guys. It's just a little bit of confetti. It's not too much, but it looks really, really sharp. This is going to be a car that a lot of people are going to be happy with. Uh, first time in years we got in a Vegas race win car. I want to say to Truix, perhaps. Uh, I could be mistaken on that one. So anyways, you go to the front of the car here, you got the number five. You got Hendrick Cars, or not Hendrick, but Hendrick Motorsports. You got that very, very nice uh, front end design with the red and the white stripes behind uh, both of the headlights. You do have a little bit of dirt and grime there. Notice the front valence here, the, the ZL1 decal and all that good stuff. Much more detailed uh, than the norm, so that's a very nice touch. You go to the left side of the die cast, and for some reason, the number five and just... Everything with this paint scheme looks a lot more proportioned uh, than your standard 164 release. And the reason why is because these are based off photo references. They generally make the you know the number the perfect size, the uh, in the perfect spot in the car, all your contingencies. You know, the race one cars, in my opinion, are the best uh, releases in terms of accuracy. because Not because of the race wear damage and stuff, but it's because of everything else that goes on the car that they make much more accurate. Got the Tarleton logo right there. Not sure if they're making a die cast for that. Notice the pop rivet design there. Very, very sharp. Now, this one has confetti. Some of his race wins this year, though, I don't think will have confetti. So, perhaps if you're one of those collectors, like I mentioned, that like the accuracy that the raced versions provide, perhaps one of the road course wins um, will have less confetti, thus making it more of a car you could perhaps use in a stop motion and not have uh, all the dirt and the grime, but it have a little bit more of the accuracy with the terms of contingencies and whatnot. It's got the Kyle Larson name banner right there. Not sure what that logo is there. He got um, Exalta. Oh, I think that's a, is that, is that Wendell Scott? I think that is. That's pretty cool if it is. I've uh, got Akron's uh, Freightliner Mac Tools, uh, Simeon Cincinnati Industries. Got the back window panel there. Valvoline, HendrickCars.com, American Ethanol. Notice they don't have the hiring technicians decal there. That was not present until late in the season, which is going to make the late season race wins a lot more uh, popular. Cup Series race car, Goodyear. Go to the back end of this car right here, guys. You got HendrickCars.com, a little bit more detail. Check out the spoiler. Actually has the bracket mounts. Uh, you can see that right there. You can see kind of the plates, uh, bracket mounts. I'm not sure if that's a weight uh, plate there on the left side. I mean, that would make sense if they could mount like a little metal plate to the left side uh, of the spoiler. It gives it more weight in the corner. Could be mistaken on that. The L1 Camaro 1LE number 5. Very, very, very sharp looking stuff. Over to the right side of the die cast. And one of my favorite portions of the car is the right side side skirt. Because every time they have a race win car, they always have the exhaust plate here. And to me, it just looks really, really sharp, guys. I'm digging this car, guys. And if you haven't picked up this car, I believe this car is still in stock at Circle B Diecast. Could be mistaken. These Larson Diecasts sell extremely quick. Um, so if you want to pre-order any of the newest stuff coming out, highly recommend you do. Because once it arrives, people buy it like crazy. Uh, if you want to get free shipping the next time, you want to get NASCAR Diecast hats, t-shirts, 124s, 164s. You know what to do. Promo code down below, Diecast Buffet at checkout at Circle B Diecast. Uh, com. So the roof of the car here, this is kind of perplexing to me. Maybe I'm um, out of the woodwork on this one, but I don't remember uh, the one and a half miles having the roof hatch. Now, that could have been a rule change that I, I, I forgot, you know, uh, but that is kind of interesting. Another thing that I know is the roof number looks a lot sharper uh, than it did on the clean uh, HendrickCars.com paint scheme, which I might add is still extremely hard to get at a decent price. If you have that die cast already, con con congratulations. You are a very lucky cat because 
Um, it They did not release that other shipment that I was hoping they were. So that car is pretty much going to dry up from here on out, unfortunately, barring a crazy Authentics release. HendrickCars.com right there. Uh, notice the little confetti. Very, very sharp. You know, it's a small amount of confetti, but I think it's more of the, the thought that counts. You know, the, the number five, the, the Ricky Hendrick paint scheme, and the first win with Larson's comeback. And little did we know that was going to be the, 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 the boom goes the dynamite and start off a championship um, bl expletive whipping uh, of a season because he whipped everyone um, in that five car. It's got Nations Guard right there in the deck lid. Obviously, you can't really read it there, but that's what it says. It's got the Larson logo there. I tell you what, though. 2021 was a domination season. It was Jeff Gordon, 1998. It was, it was oh my goodness, it was definitely Jimmy Johnson, 2007. It was one of the most dominating uh, seasons in modern NASCAR history. And I think as time goes on, we're going to look at Larson more and more in the same light as a Jeff Gordon, as a Jimmy Johnson. No, his accolades will probably never be up there in terms of championships and wins because, let's be honest, he spent a lot of years at a, not an average, but certainly not a Hendrick uh, Motorsports level team, Chip Ganassi. Clearly, he was much better than the equipment he was provided in the 42 car, uh, but I think definitely he's going to get another championship, no doubt about it. It might be a little bit later in his career because there's so many new drivers coming in this sport. But he is certainly a, the modern-day equivalent of a, 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 let's be honest, A.J. Foyt. I mean, he is just that freaking good. Um, he's He can drive anything. doesn't matter if it's dirt cars, late models. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised he got a good finish in an open-wheel Indy car. I mean, that's how talented he is. And no one expected him to have the championship season he had. I think we all kind of expected him to have a shot at winning a race. I think that's what I was thinking, maybe one or two wins, maybe. No one in their right mind um, will tell you that they expected him to win 10 races. But in terms of 164 releases getting made for his race wins, I don't think the Watkins Glen one was offered. Could be mistaken on that. On that, Not sure about the Sonoma one. Um, but I, I recall there was one or two of them that were not going to get made in the 164 scale. Could be mistaken at that. on that. Obviously, the Texas one I think got offered. Uh, Roval, Phoenix, those are three right there. The Coke 600 one, that one got offered. Nashville, Bristol, so many amazing paint schemes. And what's funny to it is that Larson could have easily had 15 wins. Think about it. Pocono blew a tire. That was crazy. He darn near won both Darlington races. That would be three wins right there. Obviously, the Texas fall one. Not sure if they're offering that 164. So that's three wins right there. The spring Kansas race, he pretty much threw away. And you could even argue the Michigan um, race, they threw that one away. So that easily could have been 15 points paying wins in one season. That's what I'm saying. It is high time we start looking at Kyle Larson in the same lot as a Jimmy Johnson and a Jeff Gordon in his prime. Statistically, they're nowhere near even close right now. But in terms of actual on-track talent, he is absolutely at that level right now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching the video. we got plenty more Larson reviews coming up on the channel. Hope you're having a swell day out there, guys. This is an awesome diecast, and I just remember being so excited when Larson won this race, man. It was so cool to see him get a, get a win in the five car. It just felt right. Oh, boy. That was fun. Uh, more Larson content coming up on the channel, guys. Thank you all so much for watching again. Diecast Buffet, signing off.